In 2018, I listened to an audiobook that completely changed my life. It was Essentialism by Greg McEwen. There are many books out there that encourage us to live with less, but they certainly never impacted me as much as Greg's book did. Rather than looking at how to live life with as little as possible, Greg makes the reader question what they're living with and why they're living with those things. From information overload to late night shopping, overworking, um, a busy but not very pr productive productivity kind of lifestyle, Greg asks us as the readers to look at our lives and take control again by asking ourselves what is essential about my life? By doing so, the reader could identify how to regain control over their choices and consequently things like their money, their thoughts, their energy and their time. So after finishing the book, I went into full essentialism mode. In 2019, at the very beginning in January, I quit shopping for a whole year. And for that whole year, I didn't buy anything for myself. I didn't buy a single coffee, any alcohol, clothes, books, decorations. I didn't go on any holidays or any trips. I didn't buy any hobby materials or plants or any takeout, jewellery, stationery, tickets to events, or even a snack or pastry at a cute little bakery. Now, yes, the rules were tight, but I stuck to them. And the main rule was I just couldn't buy anything for myself. The only things I could pay for were essentials, like groceries, my rent, my bills, pet insurance, and other pet essentials. I could, however, buy for others, and I was allowed to buy a coffee when I was out socialising with a friend, and one meal out a month, but no more than one drink per social event. And I could only socialise once a week at the maximum. By the end of 2019, I saw, as you can expect, a significant improvement in my savings, and I was only earning minimum wage then as a freelancer. Holding myself back from buying anything for myself proved to be worthwhile to my bank account. So after seeing the positive effects of a no-buy year, I decided to continue. That one year became three years, and during that time I saved up enough money to fund the entirety of my PhD, which I'm now taking, even though I was still only on minimum wage. Now, I stopped my no-buy in 2023 for numerous reasons. And they were little things, like I missed going to bookshops and going out on dates, um, having coffee and just sitting in a cafe by myself, or going to charity shops and having a bit of a nosy browse. Also, sometimes I was just craving a sweet treat from a bakery. You know, there are lots of delicious vegan goodies here in Edinburgh, and I, you know, I wanted to try them very badly. So I decided that after very strict three years, I was allowed to treat myself again. The trouble is that I forgot, really, that my circumstances had changed and the effects were financially brutal, to say the least. When I did my first two years of no buy, I had a live-in partner with whom I split everything 50-50 regarding household expenses. But then in 2022, um, I left my full-time freelance job to pursue YouTube full-time. But even then, it wasn't truly full-time because I need to do my PhD part-time and YouTube accommodated my PhD work schedule much more. But such drastic changes came at a massive cost, as you could expect. Without a predictable monthly income, even at minimum wage, with fewer working days a week, whilst dedicating time to a PhD, the cost of living going up and no partner to share the financial burdens with, such as, you know, essentials, um, my savings plummeted. As I'm recording this in August of 2023, I'm down over £7,000, meaning that I've lost nearly half of my savings in less than a year. And even though I wasn't spending excessively, I wasn't going on holidays, I wasn't going out partying, I wasn't buying a load of clothes and all that, I knew that I needed to take action because clearly just minimal living um, wasn't sustainable on my current level of income. I could keep working harder, and I will do, but I still need to pull my purse strings a bit tighter uh, to weather out the storm. So I'm starting my no-buy year in September rather than the traditional January, and I'm doing this for multiple reasons. The first is very obvious, a uh, necessity. You know, I have to respond quite quickly to my rapidly depleting savings that I've kind of buried my head in the sand over. However, if you're watching this and considering a no-buy, um, I'm here to explain to you why it actually may be the best time to start a no-buy now rather than in January with the whole New Year resolution period. 
So the main reason is that the holiday season is coming up, and I know what you're thinking, Chinsia, that's probably the worst time to start, let me explain. With back to school, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Christmas and New Year's coming up, capitalism will be at full power. Companies will dial up their marketing to the maximum, which is really the ultimate test. You know, it's incredibly hard to say no to all the flashy sales and shiny items being tossed onto your social media feed every, what, 10 seconds? Shopping gives us a hit of dopamine and that addictive sense of dopamine is pretty hard to break, which is why so many people fail on their no buy during the new year. In the new year, you are probably at your maximum boredom and you're completely miserable because you're strapped for cash and January is basically the worst month. Sorry, January babies. And going cold turkey with shopping can be very tough for people because that shopping was a very easy source of dopamine to get them through that post-holiday blues. However, starting no buy in September eases you into weaning off shopping because you can still shop, just not for yourself. On no buy, you can still buy gifts for other people. So during these months, you can continue to shop for others, just not for yourself and you'll give yourself a four month trial period of shopping only for others. And this is, can be incredibly rewarding, especially if you subscribe to the social importance of generosity and gift giving. Learning to spend your money on others and not yourself is a crucial part of the no buy process and it will make it so much easier for you to get used to not absentmindedly shopping just for yourself because you're bored during these four months. So. What are my rules for no buy? Everyone has to have their own rules for no buy. And you know, the rules are pretty straightforward. I can't buy anything for myself. I can buy for other people. Of course, I can buy the essentials as laid out kind of in Greg's book, the principles of essentials and essentialism are paying my rent, my bills, my insurance, things like that. You know, the very, very essentials. So what does no buy actually really look like when you look at the microcosms of your life? Well, for some people, no buy means buying no games for a whole year. For others, it might mean buying no clothes and hats or books or board games or even Netflix. Um, yes, when you go on no buy, that means cancelling all of your subscriptions. For those of you interested in the minute details of my no buy, here is a closer look at what I am not buying specifically because this is tailored to my life and what I tend to spend my money on. Yours will be different. So the first one is a major one, uh, no books. And this is simultaneously the easiest and the most difficult hurdle for me. You know, bookshops are my weakness, as you can probably tell. And when I'm there, I like to, you know, support my local indie shop by buying a book. But, you know, I spend enough of my money on books over the years. So another year without my patronage won't do them any harm. And the ones who will benefit the most over the next year are those more in need my local libraries. I love my libraries and I use two of the libraries in the city a lot, uh, but they're more academic libraries. And at consequence, I've neglected the smaller local ones. So this year I'll be dedicated to those ones. Um, the only exception to this rule may come in November and December, which is my birthday month and Christmas month, uh, during which people will very likely gift me book tokens. Uh, I'm allowed to spend those, but I can't go over the book token limit. I can spend the money that's on the token, but I can't spend my own money off that token. The next one is very obvious. No clothes, no plants, no stationery, or any other personal objects. I mean, the easiest way for me to put this is to say basically all material items are off limits. My biggest weaknesses are plants um, and charity shop clothing, artwork at craft fairs uh, and stationery, of course. Now, I doubt I will run out of washi tape and sticky notes within the next 12 months, so I should be absolutely fine for my university work. Uh, and none of those items are necessary anyway, they're just purely aesthetic. Additionally, um, I don't need more than the 30 plants that I already own, uh, but I know that if I get the urge for some more, I doubt it, but if I do, um, I'll hone in that desire by improving my propagation techniques. You know, I've propagated a couple of my plants, um, but improving that skill would be quite a nice thing to do and it would be beneficial for gift giving, especially. Next one is no hobby materials. Now, I sometimes get very carried away with project ideas, thanks ADHD, um, resulting in me spending money in art and craft shops, pens, pencils, paintbrushes, lino printing materials, ink and paint and fabric. It just, they haunt every corner of my house that isn't already dominated by a stack of books. So I'm focusing on using up what I have for the rest of the year. And 
even if I become particularly proficient at one of those hobbies, so much so that I absolutely exhaust the amount of materials available, um, my goal will then be to move on to the next stash of hobby materials that I have and to work my way through to ground zero with all of them. The next one is smaller socialising. So, okay, thankfully I'm off the dating scene. So, because let's face it, uh, going on several dates a week with strangers is expensive. Modern dating is taxing, not only to the heart, but the mind and the wallet. So now those days are behind me, I can focus on the relationships that I already have. My friends and I are great at socializing on the on the lowdown. You know, none of us have been partiers who go out drinking, thank goodness. Uh, we tend to just go get a coffee and sit for a few hours together somewhere. However, it, it will be fun to try and do some more free activities with people, such as going to an art gallery and sketching for a few hours together, or hiking and having a picnic, or going around to each other's houses more and just playing board games, or meeting up on a Saturday to go to the local library and pick out a book together and go read them somewhere, which I think will be so cute. You don't have to spend a lot of money, if any money really, to have a memorable day with a friend. So that's what I'm aiming at, memorable, I'm aiming to create memories without spending money. The next one is no solo expenses. Naturally, we all have to eat, uh, but eating, drinking and snacking out by myself is off limits. This means that unless I'm actively socialising with someone, I can't buy food and drink. That's outside of my weekly food shop. So that means no coffees and no pastries, no alcohol, no takeaway, etc. This also means no solo trips to the cinema, theatre or any kind of paid event or workshop. My next rule is no new cosmetics, skincare, perfume, etc. So one of my rules that I've always followed throughout my no buy years has been the following. I can replace and fix items, but I can't buy extra. And this most notably applies to lipstick for me because that's my weakness. If I see a shade I want, I'll get it. However, all cosmetics, perfume, nail varnish, skincare, uh, everything like that are now a replace, but don't add category. So when I run out of something, it can be replaced if I want to replace it. But otherwise, the aim is to keep everything down to the everyday items and use up the excess and get rid of it. The final one is no subscriptions. So the only subscription that I actually have is Audible, so I'm going to be cancelling that. I'm quite sure that I have enough audiobooks in my library to keep me going through the entire year, but if I don't, um, the library will offer audiobook services, so I can use that instead. Now I'm lucky because I don't have Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus or whatever people use nowadays. So that's very easy for me. But I think this will be the biggest hurdle for most of you out there, canceling those subscriptions. So the only subscriptions I'll keep are the ones that I use for my business, such as Adobe for video and audio editing, uh, my podcast hosting service, my email and my website hosting, etc. But nothing outside of that, no fun kind of subscription. As I've already said, a no buy year will look different for everyone, as everyone will have different vices and they'll have different essential needs, etc. You know, some won't even consider not having to buy a book or makeup for a whole year because you don't wear makeup and you don't read books. Um, still, they may buy video games or subscribe to multiple streaming platforms. There are many things that I don't do that I don't have to consider giving up on my no buy year that others will have to. But the takeaway is that no buy is learning what is truly essential in your life. It's not about punishing or depriving yourself of anything, but it's learning to look at life and your money differently by learning to appreciate what you have from your, things like your local libraries to your galleries to parks and hobbies and talents that you've let slide in favour of binge watching Netflix all night. The question is, who are you without the latest trend, without the false nails, the alcohol, the streaming services, the latest games, the, the daily Amazon delivery? Well, if you start no buy, you're about to find out. It's a tough challenge, but I've really enjoyed the first three years I did it, and I'm excited for my next year of doing it. And I'm excited to hopefully get out of the hole. That's what I'm mainly paying for, but also to learn about myself. You know, it's been three years since I first started. Let's truly find out what's essential to me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, please consider subscribing and liking the video. If you have any requests for any videos, I have a form, a Google form that you can use in the description box to send them to me. I also have bookish videos over on my Patreon. If you want to consider subscribing over there, I'd be very grateful. Or on my main channel, I talk about history, particularly dark history and ancient history. So I hope you have a wonderful day and remember, be happy and healthy and books save lives. So keep reading.